Today we're putting in the T-posts that will support the vertical plants as they grow in the grow boxes in the mid-lighter gardening method. What I've done in order to make three T-posts in a 20-foot length bed, the T-posts should not be more than 10 feet apart, is I bought seven treated 4x4 four four lumber that's 8 feet tall. The crossbars will be 6 feet long, so I cut 2 feet off the ends of these three boards here which gave me three support pieces here. Then I cut these, so these are all two feet long. I then cut these at 45 degree angles, so it's two feet in length on the outside here. Then I pre-drilled and put in three inch screws, galvanized screws, the same ones I used on the rest of the grow box. So I've got those all set, ready to go. I've got my holes pre-drilled here for my six inch long nails. I tried using lag bolts, but I found that did not work very well. It's gonna be very important that you pre-drill these holes to get the nails through. We already have the three eight foot length poles in the ground, and let's take a look at that. Here are the three eight foot tall posts already set into the ground. Using the post hole digger, I went down 12 inches, found the center, of the end board and then with the help of my daughter and a level made the post level on both sides so it's straight up and down. So we did our best to get these all centered in the grow box. Everything's ready now to go ahead and put the six foot post on the top. So we've got our ladder set up. My daughter's going to help me do that while I get my sledgehammer and the six inch long nails. Okay, I've got the six foot horizontal support marked in the center. And I've got the center of my post marked. I get them lined up. Now we're ready to nail. Get the nails already go. My daughter will hold this while I go ahead and use the mallet to nail it down. I don't know how well you can see this in the video, but I found the center of the six foot support. Drew an X, measured in an inch from the edge directly in, and that's where I put my nails. What I did to pre-drill the screws on the supports is I measured in one and a half inches from the end and then an inch in from the side and that's where I pre-drilled and then put in my three inch long galvanized screws. That'll give me an inch and a half in this wood and an inch and a half piece in the other piece of wood. There we have it. We've got the two by fours on the outside and those really help with the stability of the entire T-frame system here. When the plants are growing up into the T-frame, they could literally be hundreds of pounds, if not more, pulling down on the weight, pulling these in. So those 2x4s are going to help support those 4x4 posts because the 4x4 posts have no support on them other than simply being dug down 12 inches into the ground. Now what I did do on the very ends is I did add a couple 3-inch galvanized screws which uh, actually seemed to help quite a bit just to stabilize it as we're getting things on. I'm very pleased with it. Now the next thing we're going to do is run our tension wire. And we're going to run two lengths of that, 24 inches in from the end on both sides. And that way we'll have four areas to run strings down into the bed and plants will be able to grow up. This is how you get a lot of plants in one area, very condensed, and get super production from a small area. Okay, we have the wire in right now, so we actually have four rows that we can actually attach plants to. Now, a lot of people mention, man, it looks like you're wasting a lot of space in these four-foot aisles. Looks like you could be growing plants there. Well, in reality, what happens is that this crossbar here is six feet wide, which means it goes into the aisle of foot. And if we put one over here, that means it goes into the aisle of foot. That means we're actually growing two feet into the aisle, eight feet up in the air. What's great about that is it gives more light, more space. Look at the space here. It's two feet between the wire and, and here. Lots of room for light to come through. This is south. And lots of room to walk and bring a wheelbarrow and other things through here. So we actually have four feet of elbow space that we're using two additional feet inside the aisle by having these T-frames here. Great idea. Really like that. Okay, so I've got these wires in. This is 9 gauge T 
tension wire. It's very stiff. What Jim Kennard recommends you do, or what he does, is he simply drills all the way through the 4x4, wraps the wire around the 4x4, and then wraps it around itself, and then does the same on the other end. I like my wire nice and tight, so I added the bolts and these turnbuckles to keep the wire tight. And so here I wrapped it around. This actually turned out to be a really nice wrap. This one, not so much. Then I tightened it up with the turnbuckle. Here's, the, again, here's it's tied here and tied there. My concern is, is that these wires g get slack and they start drooping a lot and I want to tighten them up again. Every time you twist this wire, it, it weakens the wire. So you can see I'm almost all the way out of room here on this turnbuckle. So I would have to unwrap this wire here, pull it tight again, and then wrap it around. I'm concerned that that much may really weaken or even break the wire. So what I did over here on this other side, again this isn't recommended or required, but this is just me. Um, I got this little kit that included this item right here. So it's, it, it kind of buffers the, the turn on the wire, puts less stress on the wire, and then it comes with these three items right here to um, tighten the wire down. This is much easier than having to twist the wire around. Now if you want to twist this wire around, I guarantee you, you'll need to have a good pair of vice grips. Regular pliers won't make it work, I tried it. So here I put these on and so if I, and these are nice and tight. I have the turnbuckles here on the end. If I want to tighten this up more and I get to where I can't tighten it, I can undo these, pull the wire back through and it's not all twisted and then make it tighter. So anyway, just something to consider when you're putting the wires on. Very happy with the way it turned out. It actually looks quite nice. I can see the practicality in doing this. So what we'll be doing is we'll be putting string on the supports here and running them down into the garden and, you, and we'll have lots and lots of room to grow plants here. Of course all the items that I showed will have links down below this video so you can see exactly what I purchased, where I purchased it, what it cost and uh, help you get started in building your tea frames. This is LDS Prepper reminding you if you are prepared you shall not fear. And if you use this six foot wide tea frame for your midlighter garden, you'll really be able to maximize your productivity out of a four foot bed by actually growing into the aisles.